sure. But we have a very good uh, dialogue today uh, in, in Brussels about European defence. It's a dialogue that we want to bring you know, step by step with the industry, with the European industry, industry active in Europe as well. Huh? We don't need to exclude anybody. Uh, we see that it will take some time, of course, to build this dialogue, but there is a reality that we cannot uh, avoid. We need to build uh, this European industry uh, platform and, and the reality. A word about uh, June, the very important summit in June. Yes, in, in June we have a very uh, extremely interesting summit, uh, European Business Summit. By the way, we'll celebrate the 20th anniversary of, of the summit on 10-11 June. So we have a lot of new commissioners uh, present and the, the main theme will be on sustainability. So how can we as industry respond to this action for call, uh, call for action from the European Commission on the Green Deal? What is, what is uh, as industry, what are we ready to do uh, in, in, in order to participate? It's always very important to have a discussion between stakeholders, between industry, business, politics, but also civil society and NGOs about the common paths we can pursue when it comes to the uh, European defense industry. Uh, we are in the middle of very crucial budget talks and I think it's very important to exchange some, some views and also for me to express my disappointment about cutting back defense budgets uh, in such a crucial and very volatile time. Uh, we need more uh, public discussion about the necessity of a common European defense strategy uh, for Europe to be able to play uh, the power game, uh, to, to be at the table. Uh, if other uh, powers do not play by the rules, uh, we also uh, have to have something at our hands to uh, implement. And Europe cannot uh, afford uh, not to have a common uh, security infrastructure well fitted for the modern times. There is clearly a necessity uh, to further strengthen European defense integration. Uh, duplications, uh, parallel structures, inefficiencies have to get rid of. We have to be stronger. We have to invest more in military mobility uh, on the defense fund to be able to support each other and also to be able to play as an autonomous player in the world stage. What do you think about uh, the strategy of Europe in the world? Unfortunately, uh, the European Union still uh, wa was unable to create a framework where we can work together in a fast and efficient manner. Uh, very often the EU does not speak with one voice. Uh, we have a strategic parallel uh, uh, interests very often between uh, different member states. We have to get stronger, we have to get faster, we have to get more integrated in order to have a stronger stay in the globalized world. Bringing us all together today, and thank to all of you, the attendees, because I realized that there was originally 300 who signed up for this, but perhaps because of the various other threats uh, that are out there, uh, we've had a slightly reduced audience. But thank, uh, thank you all for coming, and thank you for uh, staying to the panels. I would like to listen to all three panels, but I'm very glad to listen to the next to last one. Um, I would tell you up front that uh, European defense uh, cooperation, European defense growth uh, is not a threat to the alliance. And as I said uh, in my opening remarks, to us it's an absolute uh, requirement for us to defend ourselves. We, we've already worked together quite well. I think we are witnessing a continued uh, uh, I would say progress towards increased cooperation uh, and as a result uh, defense industries are more and more um, working together regardless. Uh, we've, we've already witnessed consolidation over time so this is not a, uh, a new trend, this is something that uh, uh, collectively uh, has been approached over time and, and the European Union has been productive, not counterproductive, uh, in encouraging that uh, through its policies. Uh, it goes somewhat against the national grain, but that's, uh, that's also the nature of the European Union. It brings together the power of the collective uh, by sometimes imposing common standards, common policies, common regulations. In this case, ideally setting the conditions for greater cooperation amongst European industry. The concern that those outside the family of the European Union member states is to be excluded in a time when, uh, when response to defense needs is important. We don't want to lose the, the progress that's already been gained in terms of the uh, you know, cooperation amongst the, 
uh, in defense industry in North America and Europe. Uh, so we don't want to see uh, policies or even trends set in place that would reverse uh, years of progress and would potentially result not necessarily in the efficiencies that uh, um, the EU member states uh, need and deserve, but also that the you know, transatlantic community uh, needs also to respond to the defense requirements it needs to defend the alliance. And as was said, that remains the cornerstone of the European Union's defense is, the, is NATO, and they recognize that. And as a result, I think that what we see is very, very healthy uh, cooperation uh, at many, many different levels. I would just end saying that we've got plenty of challenges to face collectively um, that we need to focus on. And everything that we can do uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we are bringing together our efforts and our resources to address those challenges, then we're going to benefit collectively. We won't have all the solutions right in the first time, uh, I, as I said before, I'm fairly optimistic with some of the European Defense Industrial, Industrial Policy Initiatives, PESCO, because it's addressing real challenges, and the member states who are part of those projects are talking to other allies, and in, of the 47 projects, 46 are led by allies, and they know of the projects that we're, uh, we're working on within the alliance and multinational cooperation areas that are similar uh, and will ensure the complementary complementarity because they can't afford it to spend twice uh, on two different initiatives. And uh, they'll, they'll spend their effort on whichever group is addressing the need uh, in the best manner possible. So we think that that competition is okay. In terms of the uh, eligibility for funding, we do need to put that into perspective. As it was said before, uh, you know, U.S. spends upwards of more than 25% of its defense uh, budget on research and development and, and um, uh, systems acquisition. And that's well over uh, 180 billion, I mean, it's nearly near 200 billion, I think I would really say. And uh, comparatively, the EU, oh, I'm sorry, I should say European states, uh, are spending up where, upwards of well over 50, maybe it's close to 80 billion, that's great, that's not the, the latest uh, figures I saw, but you can see the scale there is significantly different. Uh, and you want to be able to um, actually uh, capitalize on both those sets of investments, and that's important. So whatever comes up with EDF, if it's 13 billion, or if it's much less because of the MNFF, you know, negotiation going on, 6 billion, it's only a portion of the European um, defense investment, and it's still a, almost a drop in a bucket if you put the transatlantic uh, investment collectively together. So it's not going to make the difference, but it will make a difference. And so that's important, and we would encourage it because it will end up in responding to the defense needs that the uh, uh, allies need and certainly the European uh, Union member states need. So we think that the trend is good in terms of defense cooperation, and uh, we welcome uh, a new uh, directorate within DG Grow that we can we can work with directly, defense industry and space. We're looking forward to that. We've already established our initial connections. We're uh, very, very, we think it's very promising uh, work. We continue to work with the European Defense uh, Agency very, very closely, uh, and we have for some time. And frankly, as long as we continue to have the political support at the highest levels, uh, I think we're only going to see improvement and not um, regress in uh, transatlantic cooperation. So thanks again for the, the time, giving me a platform to speak a bit. It's probably more promising and optimistic than you've heard all day, but uh, that's okay. I think that uh, that uh, hopefully will drive us to get over some of the challenges and some of the barriers that continue, but uh, recognize that we've made significant progress to date already, and we're not um, standing on a brand new trail altogether. We're walking on a trail we've uh, been using for some time, and it's in the right direction. Thanks.